Hello there, and welcome to Odessa First Assembly's weekly podcast, where we bring you the heart of our Sunday message. I'm Tony, your host and the face behind our digital ministry. We're excited to dive into today's sermon, exploring the Word of God together. So grab your coffee, find a comfy spot, and let's embark on this journey of faith. Without further ado, here's this week's sermon. We're going to be talking about restoration of joy this morning. I had intended on there being two other sermons, um, one restoration from hurt and one restoration from from fear. And uh, but, you know, it's been a lot's happened uh, over the last few weeks. And so the Lord, I just really feel put this on my heart. And I just wanted to share this this morning. We're going to be looking at four texts, four different scriptures kind of as we get started this morning. And so that is Psalm 51, Psalm 51, 1 Thessalonians 5, Nehemiah 8, so Psalm 51, 1 Thessalonians 5, Nehemiah 8, and John 15. So I'll kind of give you a minute to find those, and, and uh, maybe you have uh, enough fingers kind of hold some places, or maybe you know right where those verses are, and you can turn there, but uh, uh, uh Psalm 51, 1 Thessalonians 5, Nehemiah 8, John 15. And so uh, there's two ways you can follow along, several ways you can follow along. One is if you grab the paper notes as you came in, uh, if you have one of our notebooks and you can fill in the blanks. Also, you can go to the Version app and our notes are there. You just search our church, it'll come up under events. Um, if, or if you go to our website, odessafirst.com, you can follow along there. And so let's just kind of get started this morning. In Psalm 51, verse 12. Psalm 51, verse 12. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. If you've been heard in these sermons that I've preached on restoration, we've kind of used Psalm 51 and, and 1 Samuel 111, or, uh, 11, chapter 11 and chapter 12. And so I just really felt kind of what kicked all this off for me and wanting to, to share these messages were those few words at the very beginning of verse 12. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. But let's look at 1 Thessalonians 5.16. And I'm reading out of the New Living this morning, New Living Translation. I'm doing that intentionally, mostly because of this verse in 1 Thessalonians 5.16. Because probably a lot of translations probably says rejoice always or or something like that. He's used a couple of words, but the NLT says this always be joyful. Now, if you're a cynic like me, you're like, yeah, right. Are you fa- right? <laughs> I mean, but look what Scripture is telling us, always be joyful. Let's look at Nehemiah chapter 8. And actually, I just kind of want to skip that. Well, let's read the whole verse. What's happening in Nehemiah 8 is um, they've completed the wall. If you remember the story about Nehemiah, um, he went back. His heart was broken over the state of Jerusalem. They had been in captivity. Um, And if you can read Nehemiah and Ezra really together, they're, they're, they're like, peers of what's happening uh, of what's happening in Jerusalem during this era but they have finished the rebuilding of the wall and they start reading the laws of God and it causes the people to break and to weep because they realize how how much they have fallen short in following God's will and so verse 10 Nehemiah continued and go celebrate with a feast of rich foods and sweet drinks and share gifts of food with people who have nothing prepared. This is a sacred day before the Lord. And here's, of course, the key sentence right here. Don't be dejected and sad, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Isn't that a beautiful promise? In John chapter 15 and verse 11. I've told you these things so that you'll be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. I am sure I'm not the only one that has faced um, disappointment 
Um, I, I gotta be honest, I'm, I'm a little disappointed right now. We've had some exciting things open up doors for kind of some vacation time. And then I, I go and break my back. And so I get to sit on the sidelines while the kids get to enjoy our vacation. And so that, that's, uh, that, that's a reason to not be so joyful. But I know that we've all faced things and, and disappointments in life. And I'm not talking about like not getting what you wanted for your birthday, right? I'm not, I'm not talking about, you know, some of those small things or little things. I'm talking about deep discouragement or, or deep defeat or, or difficulties, those, those tribulations that just really knock the wind out of us. The reality is this, we are going to face those seasons and issues in life. We are going to go through them. I remember the early day years ago, if you don't know, before we came here, um, we were U.S. missionaries. We were missionaries with a ministry called Youth Alive. And, and uh, we've had many missionaries across our platform. And that's exactly what I, I did on many Sundays as we traveled to churches and I shared the vision of Youth Alive and what it was. And, and people signed up on our support team. And what Youth Alive is, is a lot like what First Priority is. And that's what we did. We did campus clubs. We did school assistance assemblies and outreaches like that, but we were missionaries. But you know, when we first started that, it was just a, it, it was a, it, it was a step of faith. I mean, and I'm going to tell you, you know, up until coming here, really the majority of our ministry revolved around that of youth ministry. And uh, I'm going to tell you, you don't, you don't get rich doing youth ministry. <laughs> Um, and I could tell you story after story of just moments of, of feeling like not having it enough. But uh, there were so many times where we saw God break through and come through and, and just the right moment in time. But, you know, I was really trying to bring the place of stability. Our vision was we wanted to go in into every town in West Texas, New Mexico, and do these school assemblies for free. It wasn't for free. And so we had a, we wanted to raise that money and also our, you know, we wanted to uh, uh, make a living and, and have salary from that. And so I had found a grant from an organization and we put together, uh, man, testimonies and videos and, and all this stuff. We had seven minutes to present what our ministry was for this ministry grant. And so, and, and they had a time of a, like a banquet and we came together. Together, and it was like four or five other ministries, and each one had seven minutes, and we all presented our hearts. It wasn't a, a competition thing. It was just, you know, that moment where they would award, you know, sometimes everybody got it, sometimes not everybody got it. But, and so we would present our ministry, and, uh, and we were going for a grant, and we had asked for $50,000, and we felt like $50,000 would help us with our salary and, and be able to, uh, uh, you know, bring our youth alive throughout West Texas and New Mexico. And I mean, it was a really great night being with uh, this foundation that was giving these grants and other ministries. And, and man, I mean, there were tears, we're applauding each other. I mean, it was a, a really special moment. And we, God was really blessing our work. I mean, we were seeing doors open up and, and we're getting to schools. I mean, when superintendents give you their phone number, their cell phone, you, you know you've, you, you've, you've really kind of opened up some doors there. They do not give that thing away lightly. <laughs> and uh, when, even if, if tragedies happen, superintendents were calling us. And would, I mean, we would do emergency things in the schools and classes. And I mean, there's some great things happening. We're seeing all kinds of kids saved. And so we present this. And I'm thinking, there's no way they're not going to give us this money. And I'll never forget a few days later. And I'm going to tell you, we, I mean, we had, we were, we had no savings. We had nothing. I mean, it, to say, I mean, we couldn't even live paycheck to paycheck because sometimes there wasn't even a paycheck. And I'll never forget, I get that letter and I'm, I'm so full of hope and, and so full of excitement. And I open up that letter and it started out like this just immediately. Dear Todd, we have chosen not to award the Ministries of Youth Alive and Seven Project our grant at this time. I'm going to tell you that to say that was a 
sucker punch is, uh, I mean, would it be lightly? I mean, really, we had put all of our hope in this moment, and I, I've shared some about this before, but, and I just remember just being defeated and feel like beat up and feel like, what's the point? And, and, and all of those things that rush through your mind. But see, what even made it harder was I was presenting with a close friend that same night. And I remember I get my letter and open it up and then I get a phone call. I mean, just a few moments later. And he said, hey, I don't know if you got your letter yet, but I got my letter. And they awarded me $50,000 for the grant. And in that moment to say congratulations, I'm going to tell you, it took a lot to say congratulations. It was difficult. There was a lot of why God in that moment. I mean, the question really is not if we get disappointed, but when we get disappointed. We, we're going to go through. I wish when we got saved, right, it took care of that, that we'd never have a difficult time again or a trial again or a tribulation again or broken heart or again or a difficulty again. And there are those moments, those special moments in times, there's no doubt, where God reaches down and in an instant, in a moment, right, he breaks through and, and our God does that and we love that in those moments, but there are many times where we have to walk through those valleys. There can be marriage issues, family issues, the state of our own mis- mental or emotional health, worries, stresses, burdens, weights. The reality is there is so much that can steal our joy. So what steals our joy? Just a few things for you very quickly. One thing that steals our joy is an unresolved past steals our joy. An unresolved past steals our joy. You see, I'm still kind of focusing in on David. If you remember, if you read Psalm 51, remember it is a prayer of repentance because of what he did, the adultery he had with Bathsheba and killing her her husband. But Psalm 51 is happening a year after David's fall. And he's confronted by the prophet Nathan. And so you can go through and read his psalms he wrote and things he wrote for that year. And I'm going to tell you, it was not happy psalms. Do you know why? Because an unresolved past of sin stole his joy. And that's important to remember when he prays, he says, restore your joy of my salvation. David lost his joy for that year. He, when, when we leave things unresolved, the enemy becomes our counselor. When, but we have to remember that God is the God of reconciliation, not just for our vertical relationship with the Lord, but also with one another. And if things stay unresolved between one another, it will steal our joy. There's another thing that steals our joy, and that's uncertain circumstance steals our joy. Uncertain circumstance steals our joy. Listen, the enemy wants to surround you with fog. He, he wants you to, he wants to cover God's answer for you. Things are going to happen. Circumstances are going to happen. Sometimes you're going to plan, 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 but plans sometimes go wrong. Uncertain circumstance steals our joy. An an undetermined future steals our joy. An undetermined future steals our joy. And yes, scripture tells us, let tomorrow worry for itself, for tomorrow has enough trouble of its own. But yet God has implanted in us a, a desire to want to fulfill vision and purpose and destiny. And we're not so much, I'm not so much talking about the tomorrow, but I'm talking about the, the finish line, the, the path, the race that God has set before you. Undetermined vision, undetermined dreams, undetermined destiny 
it can steal our joy. But when we look at the promises that we read in these four verses this morning, always be joyful. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Your joy will overflow and your joy will be restored. And that's what I want to focus on these moments this morning. In James chapter one and verse two, it tells us, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, it didn't say of some kinds. It, it didn't say if, it says when. <laughs> Consider it an opportunity for great joy. Consider it an opportunity for great joy. I know I've joked around so much about this verse. I mean, like, yay, trials, you know. I mean, but look what it's saying. When, when troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. It's not the anticipation for trials, but it's the joy during the trials that we can have. But the enemy wants to rob that from us. So what's the difference? I know that you may have heard this a thousand times, but you're going to hear it again this morning. Joy is not happiness. Joy is not happiness. Now, joy can be manifested through the emotion of happiness, but joy is not happiness. Joy is something that is internal. It's something, one, that God does on the inside of us, and two, it is a fruit of the Spirit. So as we yield and, and heed the work of the Holy Spirit in our life, one of those fruits is going to be that of joy. But it's also a, a blessing work of God within us. It's a, joy is a gift to us. Joy is also something that is eternal. And what I mean by that is this, is that joy this doesn't happen when things are going well. Joy is something that happens and, and, and uh, uh, flourishes on the inside of us no matter what's happening around us. No matter the trial or the difficulty or things are going good, things are going bad, it doesn't matter. It's eternal. But joy is also a choice. Now, I'm not saying that you decide to be joyful, but there are things you can decide that brings joy. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kinds come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. So here's, here's one important thing. The first important thing I want you to know. Joy is based on the outcome of the trial. Now, I don't necessarily mean that the trial is going to end the way that you wanted to end. So it's not, joy's not even based on the results of, of, of whatever the, when it comes to the end of that difficult period, where the joy comes in is the growth that happens because of the trial. See, James 1 3 says, For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. That's why you consider it great joy to have the opportunity to go through a trial. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. You are going to grow when you face difficult moments. I, you, maybe you are not, maybe, let me say it this way. Maybe you're not like me, but I, I tend to learn things through the school of hard knocks. No pun intended with my back, but is anybody like that? If, if you're learning something through the school of difficulty, the scripture is saying is have joy because of the growth that's going to happen in you, not the result of what's going to happen, but what I'm doing on the inside of you. That is why we have a joy that the world doesn't have because the world things have a finality and it's by chance. But from believers, I, we see it totally different. It's a realization that trials represent the possibility of growth. Think of Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 
2. I, really, we've got to understand, I don't think it's on the screen this morning, but, you know, verse 1, as it talks about that we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses and that we throw off every weight, every, every sin that slows us down or easily trips us up, and we run the race with endurance. And, and I preface that because of how verse 2 starts. We do this. So we, we run this race before us with endurance and, and, and casting off these, these little sins or things that trip us up. We do this how? Keeping our eyes on Jesus. <laughs> I, I would like jump, but I, I might would hurt another vertebrae. <laughs> The champion who, and he goes on, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith because, listen, listen to what it says, because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. You see, it says that because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross. But see, what happens so many times because our happiness is so external because of, uh, because we we rely more on that emotion. We, we, you know, we kind of stand there and, uh, you know, and and maybe we're looking at our trial or our difficulty, that, that difficult thing that we're facing. And that's all that we see. Instead of how God might come through and break through. Or, or maybe we're kind of like this. We're like standing there and we're like, oh, they got a new car. Oh, they got a new house. Oh, they're going somewhere cool for vacation. Oh, look what they're doing. Oh, look, they got this. I'm, I'm preaching really good right now. Yeah. And I'm on no painkillers right now. <laughs> we do this by keeping our eyes on our neighbor. We do this by keeping our eyes on all the good stuff we see, we think happening to everybody else. I I don't see that in there, y'all. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus. And he set the example. I mean, do you think Jesus, listen to me, do you think Jesus was like, yes, the cross. No matter of fact, it says that he prayed in a garden. And he said, if this cup could pass from me, But if not, may your will be done. Jesus, it's not that he was like, yes, yay, yay. But he knew what was going to happen because of the cross. And if you could get your eyes off the circumstance you're in and get your eyes on Jesus and what he's trying to perfect in you, I'm going to tell you something. You can learn to have joy again. Disregarding it. I mean, Jesus knew. He knew. He knew the stripes. He he knew he was going to be stripped. He knew the crown of thorns. But yet, there, because of the joy awaiting him, joy is a focus before it's a feeling. Joy is a focus before it's a feeling. Joy was not looking to the cross, but what was going to be accomplished by the cross. Joy for Jesus was not looking at the abuse he was going to suffer at the hands of those that, that on, put him on trial, but what was going to happen as a result of that. Joy was not looking at the cat of nine tails, but what he knew the cat of nine tails was going to accomplish healing for you and me today. The joy was not Via Della Rosa. The joy was coming out of the grave. And I want you to know this morning, if you'll focus on Jesus and focus what he's doing in on you, a new joy will spring up within you. I can't be looking around for joy. I, I have to focus on the result of what I may be enduring. Listen, when I'm looking around, I will. if I'm looking and focusing on the circumstance, if I'm focused on comparison, it's going to steal and rob my joy. My faith 
has to be set before me what's happening because of the trial and after the trial. James 1, 3, for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. When your endurance is fully developed, you'll be perfect and complete, needing nothing. I mean, this is talking about having that long view, not being short-sighted. That steadfastness that, that it, it, what it's talking about is a long view of faith. I cannot guarantee you what may or may happen tomorrow, but I can guarantee you what's going to happen in eternity. When the long view of faith is an action and, and that, that it, it's talking, this perfecting, completing work, we're going to lack nothing. Joy is not based on circumstance. No matter what I do, what's happening around me, my eyes have to be set on Jesus. Joy is the focus before it's a feeling. Joy is based on the outcome of the trial. But here's what I want to guarantee you. If you keep your eyes on Jesus, joy will come. Joy will come. I mean, when I look at, if if I were to do a self-assessment of of my life, I would dare say that joy is probably where I struggle with the most. But I know that when I have so much less joy, when I'm focused on the pain, when I'm focused on the desert, when I'm focused on the trial, when I'm focused on everybody else... I want you to know that joy will come. You, you, you set your hope in the Lord and your hope will not be disappointed. Joy will come. Psalm verse 30, chapter 30, verse 5. For the anger lasts only for a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes with the morning. <laughs> Uh, listen, your, your, dark, your night may be as, as, as dark you can't see, your hands in front of your face. That trial may seem like you can't take another step. That tribulation, may, you may feel like that you're beaten down and that you've got no purpose, you've got no place to turn or to go. But I want you to know if you set your eyes on Jesus, that there will be a morning you'll wake up and there's going to be joy there, not because of something you did, but the decide you're going to trust God. Joy will come. You may be facing the biggest battle of your life right now. I want you to know that joy will come. You will laugh again. Matter of fact, I I just think I speak that prophetically right now. If you've been in a season where you can't even remember the last time that you laughed out loud, I'm just believing for the Lord that day is coming because joy comes in the morning. Joy will come. Joy will bring strength. I mean, we read the promise. Nehemiah 8, don't be dejected, sad, for the Lord is your strength. And I I just kind of want to bring that in just a little greater context again. Because the reason why Nehemiah says this is, right, that, I mean, Jerusalem had been in ruins. The, The children of Israel in captivity for the last 70 years. And now Nehemiah's come back and Ezra's working on the temple, Nehemiah on the wall. And so Ezra begins to read the laws of God, the scriptures. And it broke the people's heart because they realized that's why all of this calamity befell us because we rejected and rebelled against God. And so they felt that remorse and they were overcome by it. And so think about these words of Joshua again. 
These things I have spoken to you that joy may be in you. That the Lord, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Joy is, is something that when you focus in on the Lord, I mean, you know, you can't, I, I, I've, I've actually illustrated this out before, but with any of the fruit of the Spirit, you know, you think, you know, I, I, if you wake up any moment, any day, and you're like, you know, today, and you're thinking about the fruit, right, you, you wake up, you're like, today, today's the day I'm going to have patience. <laughs> Right, you you know, I tell you what, you want to you you pray for patience. <laughs> There's trials coming, <laughs> right? I mean, it is with any of them. Today, today I'm gonna. I mean, think about it. today I'm gonna have joy. And then, man, you hadn't even drank your cup of coffee, and something's gonna happen to rob your joy. It's got to be something that. Is done on the inside of us. It is an outflowing work of our surrender to the Holy Spirit in our lives. But that promise, John 15, 11, these things, Jesus said, these things I've spoken to you that joy may be in you. Not on your face, not on your t-shirt, not on emotion that can roll with the tide, but on the inside of you, on the inside of you. I'll never forget, it was years and years ago, and um, I was part of a church, and, and God really did a, a, a long season of a, of a special work, and we called it revival, and I mean, we're having services four or five nights a week, and I, I remember... Um, back then we had the first Monday of every month we had youth rallies. And so all the, you know, the sections in their different areas would get together. And, and so the section came in to our, to our church and I mean, we're in this revival and, and, um, to have, uh, have a youth rally and I'll never forget that, you know, there's, listen, I know I say this all the time, but you know, I, you know, there's two things. One is I have seen God, and I know many of you in the room, right? You have seen God manifest in some very special ways. And, but I'm also, I'm kind of also wired where when I see things with my eyes happening, I tend to be, you know, very skeptical. I want to weigh things out. And so, but I also believe that the psalmist wrote this, that God can do whatever he pleases. And I know when there's a work deep within us of the Holy Spirit, man, things happen. Things happen. And so there was, uh, man, God just began to move, and it was just beautiful what's happening in the altars of, of this youth service. And, but I, there was a, a PK, a pastor's daughter. I really didn't know much about her, but um, I began I began praying for her, and really just the word of the Lord. I knew she was dealing with some suicidal things and thoughts, and 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 depression, and and just all of that. And I, I'll never forget that moment. And I had heard about different things. I'm going to tell you, you know, there's. Uh, I kind of want to preface it this way. You know, when there's an authentic work of the Holy Spirit and, and certain manifestations happen, you know, sometimes people can, you know, they, they can go the wrong direction with it. And what I mean by that is, is sometimes, you know, maybe for whatever reason, I don't completely understand why, that, that people can kind of fake those things or put on those things or maybe a, a, a minister try to manipulate a direction of the service in those ways. But I, I'm going to say this was an authentic work of the Holy Spirit. I, it, it was a, what was about to happen was not, it was the furthest from my mind, but I began praying with her. And I mean, she started this, you know, a belly laugh, right? Anybody ever had this had a really good belly laugh? I mean, you get a really good belly laugh. I mean, your blood pressure comes down, right? I mean, you, you, you get relaxed and it even gets contagious, but I remember, I mean, the Lord just began this deep work in her, and um, 
And she went out under the power of God. If you didn't, we are Pentecostal here, so we, we believe in the work of the Holy Spirit. But, but, but she went out under the power of God, and everybody she hit started laughing just like she was laughing. I mean, it was the craziest thing I had ever, ever experienced. And, and afterwards, I was talking, one of her friends had actually come up to me and was telling me her whole story of what happened. And, and where she was at and what was going on. And, um, and actually, she um, was a town of about oh, 80 miles from us. And, and, I mean, she pretty much did that all the way home and into the night. And I'm not telling you that if you're struggling with a trial or depression, you know, I mean, immediately sometimes some of us are like, oh, not me. I ain't doing that, <laughs> you know. But I want you to know that God can do a miracle on the inside of you. He can do something on the inside of you that no doctor can do. He can do something. And I am not against medication. I'm not against therapists. I'm not against counselors. But I'm telling you, God can do something on the inside of you that nobody else can do. Oh, Christ wants to give us his joy. Right? Philippians 4.4, 4, do you remember that promise? Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. And here's the last thing this morning. Joy is contagious. Joy is contagious. John 15.11 tells us, I have told you these things so that you'll be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. You know, the... Uh, when I wasn't right with the Lord and I wasn't living right for the Lord. And, you know, if you've ever been that and, and been in that place or position, you tend to use every excuse you can to not get right with God. Has he ever been there? I, so I was, I was, you know, sacking, I, I know I've shared some of this before, but I was, you know, sacking groceries at Furs Supermarket. That tells you how long ago it was. Some of you know there was a such thing as Furs Supermarket. And, I, you know, some of the rudest, meanest, scowling people I carried groceries out for had a fish on their car. <laughs> Or a, a church bumper sticker. I mean, that, you know what? Too many Christians resting face is I hate you in the world. I'm, I, can we just be real this morning? If, you, if you're facing the world like that, no wonder they're not coming when you invite them. Maybe I should have stood this way and said that. <laughs> you, you want me to got what you got? Man, I have a whole lot more fun on Friday night than apparently what you're having. But when there's a deep work of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, it says that, yes, your joy is going to what? It's going to overflow. And so, yeah, people might see the emotion of happiness or, or, or laughter coming up out of you, but it's going to be a magnet for faith to those around you. And what God can do in your life. A joyful heart, it produces, a, you, know what, you know what joy does? I, I'm more, I, I can't prove this one day. If I can prove it, I'll preach a sermon on it. But I think the, the birth of joy and the work of joy in us is, the, is the, the place that gentleness and humility are birthed. The, this joy, it can, it can diffuse tension. It can bring peace to situations. I remember when me and Angela were first dating and my sister, one, one night we, I was just with my sister and, and, uh, and, and we were eating and she said, I got, I, got a, I got a question for you. And I said, okay. She said, is Angela really that happy? Is Angela really always that happy? 
I said, yeah, yeah, she is. Yeah, she's always that happy. But I'm going to tell you that joy, it will attract people to you. Our joy, when God's doing that work on the inside of us, it will be seen. It, it will be visible and it will be a catalyst of change to those around us. I want to ask you to stand this morning if you would. Thanks for joining us on this week's podcast. Be sure to tune in next time for more inspirational messages. Connect with us on social media at Odessa First AG. And if you'd like to support our ministry, visit odessafirstassembly.com forward slash giving. Until next time, stay blessed.